Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Mix Max Deathstroke. This is a third party unauthorized release. Basically, it's sort of a fan made release, but a company that's got some momentum behind him. It's unlicensed in the sense of it doesn't have permission from Warner Brothers to use Batman or Deathstroke or Slade Wilson or any of that stuff. The figure is officially labeled Stab of the Hades. But as you can see, it's clearly Deathstroke. So let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the front, Deathstroke, a bunch of swords, guns, Stab of Hades. And this is by Mix Max. The top, got a trigger there, crosshair. One side, you can see some guns. Other side, some more guns. At the bottom, no barcode, because it's not an officially licensed item. And in the back, we have Deathstroke's mask. I got this guy from eBay. I was searching a couple of these. Guy sent me an offer. I got this thing for, I don't know, 80 bucks or so. Seemed to be a very fair price compared to the other ones I saw. This, I believe, is going to be version 1. There is an upcoming version 2 that has slightly better articulation. But I wanted him now. So no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out, and he comes with quite a bit of stuff. Six alternate hands, totaling eight interchangeable hands, a total of three heads, a knife, a pistol, two grenades, sword and sheath, Deathstroke's signature staff, his sort of strap for headband or bandana, not even sure what the term for that is. He's got a sniper rifle and two different machine guns. This guy comes with all the bells and whistles. But before we take a look at that, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is the Mix Max Deathstroke version one. There is a version two upcoming with slightly enhanced articulation, but this guy's very nice. Very similar to the Mezco figures. Scale, very close. Cloth, soft goods. But this is a third party unauthorized figure, which means it's unlicensed by Warner Brothers and DC Comics. That's why in the packaging, it doesn't say Deathstroke, but that doesn't mean it's a bad figure. Usually these 112 scale third party unauthorized figures are very small, 6.0 inches. This guy's a little bigger, which really suits my interest. He's more like the six and a half inch scale. This is Deathstroke. His original nickname was Deathstroke the Terminator. His real name is Slade Wilson. He's sort of a military project. I wouldn't say gone wrong because it was successful, he has enhanced strength, agility, and a very impressive healing factor. So let's take a look at him. Starting with his head here, got that signature orange and blue split face. You can see his left eye, nothing on the right side. It's got a bunch of weathering and damage. Very well done, looks excellent. Going further down, his armor has all kind of different texturing on it. Once again, weathering, damages, Looks great. Armor onto his bicep area, forearms. He's got, of course, a couple hands. We have a holster for his pistol, sheath for his knife, soft goods cloth underneath all the different armor pieces. The figure looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, look at that sort of scales here. Extra ammo on the backside place for a sword. Really, really liking this figure. This is the best Mix Max figure that I've seen so far. And this one, you don't have to assemble yourself. They're known for giving you a body and a cloth goods kit to put on top. Those guys are expensive and I'm pretty unimpressed. And just a closer look at his face, helmet, or head sculpt. Once again, the weathering, the damage, the sculpt, the details, amazing. A lot of time, these third-party unauthorized companies, they really put passion into their work, and they do an excellent job, often better than the real thing. And here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's take a look at his accessories, and let's start off with his hands. He's got a total of eight hands, four left hands, and four right hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. 
Here's his next pair of hands. These are a couple of open hands. Here's his third pair of hands. These are a pair of gripping hands. Here's his final pair of hands. His right hand is a different kind of gripping hand. Probably holds a staff. And his left hand is also a gripping hand with a slightly smaller grip than the other hands. Now let's look at his heads. The first one is a more traditional Deathstroke helmet. The second one is a Deathstroke helmet. And the blue side looks kind of like a skull. And the third one is the unmasked Slade Wilson head. Here's his first head. This one has the more traditional Deathstroke look. Here's his second head. It has the traditional Deathstroke look, but the right side looks like a skull. Looks pretty badass. Here's his third head. This is the unmasked Slade Wilson head with its signature eye patch. Here's a strain that'll come out of the back of his helmet. Reminds me of a bandana or headband. Not sure what the term for this thing is. It's gonna attach the back of his helmet. Two little orange straps, very bendable. Here he is with that string or strap attached to the back of his head. You can't tell from the front, but when you spin around, there it is. I wish it would hang down just a little bit more, kind of like that. Here's his sword. It comes in the sheath. You can see a nice little bit of weathering there. It's got a peg for the peg hole on his back. It's got the sword here. Handle looks good. Take it out. Once again, a bunch of weathering. Detail is fantastic. Here's Deathstroke holding his sword. And here he is, holstering his sword into his sheath. That's very odd how this works. He's got this sort of gondolier type thing with the ammunition. Difficult to get the sword sheath in there. It works okay, but it has this peg that doesn't really quite fit into the hole. Now let's look at his pistol. It's a pistol. It's got black, a little bit of silver. Sculpting is excellent. Here's Deathstroke holding his pistol. And here he is, holstering his pistol. Now let's look at his knife. It's simply a knife, pretty much in all black. Got some nice weathering and silver on it. And here's Deathstroke, holding the knife. Not super tight in this hand, but it definitely stays in there. And then, holstering the knife into his sheath. Now for his grenades. He's got two of them. They're both pretty small. Gray, with a black pin at the top. Here's Deathstroke holding that grenade. It's quite small, and it doesn't seem to have any way to attach to his belt or anything like that. Now let's look at his staff. Nice detail over this thing. Got a couple of gripping spots here. The tips are the same. It does come apart and goes back together just fine. You can have Destro pulling a staff without the extra pieces, like it's broken down. He can put it away like this, pull it out, and then extend it. And here's a staff, fully extended. Destro's ready to kick some ass. Here are his guns. He has three of them. One is a silent sniper rifle, which is absolutely awesome. It's got this little base here, which has articulation. It's got the silencer, the scope. The detailing is fantastic. Then we have this machine gun here. It's very similar to a lot of the machine guns the other Deathstroke figures have. One of his signature weapons. Once again, the sculpt, the paint job is just great. Then he has a scoped rifle. Probably the least favorite of the three guns, but still a wonderful accessory. Blue, gray, black. Here's Deathstroke holding his machine gun. And here, holding his scoped rifle. The handle of this gun is just way too big for his hands. Hard to get the trigger, finger, and that gun to all work and pose properly. Here's Deathstroke, laying down, holding a sniper rifle. Can't quite get the head and the eyes to line up with the scope. It's still an amazing weapon. So now that I've had this guy for a little while, he has some flaws. It's an absolutely awesome figure. He's fantastic, he looks great, but there are some problems. 
both these sort of armor pieces on his biceps. They can sort of slide down fairly easily. Not a big deal, you can push them right back up. Having similar problems here, stuff coming down. Got to get it just right. Backside here, not a fan of the way this sort of thing hangs down. It's way too far back, but I get they're trying to go over the sword and the sheath. And the short of the seat, they are nice, but you can't really get it to stay in that hole there. It doesn't really execute the way it's supposed to. Then this hand here, it's a semi-open hand. It does have a separate finger for the trigger. Works good with a machine gun. Not nearly as good with a scoped rifle or the sniper rifle. I love this figure, but just a couple things they could have tweaked to make it over the top perfect. Now they're taking a pretty good look at the figure and its many accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, staying at about 6.8 inches tall, which is phenomenal. Usually these third party unauthorized figures are 6.0 inches, very small. This guy is the perfect size for my collection. That is going to translate to 17 centimeters. Now let's look at his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, it's going to rotate from side to side, up and down about that far. Tilt his head from side to side. He has articulation at the top of the neck, base of the head, as well as the bottom of the neck. Very wide range of motion there. Shoulders, ball joint, notice the armor goes right underneath there. Goes about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. Bicep cut, double jointed elbows that go all the way in. His wrist, rotate, and it's on a ball joint. His torso, it's one solid piece. His waist, rotate around, forward and back, ball joint there, although you really don't get a big range of motion there. Legs, they only go out about this far. I can feel the cloth, soft goods, stretching. Forward, about that much. Back, about that much. A little disappointing there. That's probably why they're making a version 2.0 to increase articulation in all those areas. Double jointed knees, they only go back this far. Armor sort of obstructing it. Then his ankle, rotate, tilt rock at least a little bit. And forward and back, just a little bit as well. Here's Deathstroke training in his dojo until he gets his next phone call he's got his next kill for hire now he's got to go to Gotham City to get his payday here's Deathstroke on a building rooftop in Gotham City he's getting ready to take out his target he's assassinating the mayor of Gotham in comes Batman to stop Deathstroke from hitting his target little does Batman know Deathstroke's true target was Batman he was only targeting the mayor to lure him out this is going to be a big payday. Here's Deathstroke, ready for battle. It's going to be the fight of his life. Now let's check him out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with the only other Mix Max figure that I have. Here's this Deathstroke, next to a Mix Max Two Face. I don't know if these completed figures is a new thing from Mix Max. This Deathstroke is fantastic. Not perfect, but it looks amazing. Two Face, on the other hand. He actually looks really good, but he sucks. Before this Deathstroke, there are a few different Mixed Max third-party Batman villains out there. But it's not as simple as Deathstroke. You have to buy a blank Mixed Max body and then buy the Two-Face kit to put on top of it. it. Has this cloth, soft goods clothes, really nice face sculpt. The clothes look good, but they're super loose on him. It's like you have to do your own sewing to make it work. He's stuck looking down. Just very, very disappointed with how this guy came out. I mean, his pants are just sort of falling down. You literally would have to like sew this thing yourself and modify it to make it work and look good. But damn, that's a nice two-faced face sculpt. There's also a Riddler, and I believe a Batman Who Laughs. The Riddler also uses a blank mixed max body. And as I read, the Batman Who Laughs uses very specifically a Mezco Frankenstein body. So if you don't have that, and you have the Batman Who Laughs kit, you won't be able to assemble them. And tracking down both those items are extremely pricey nowadays. Believe me, I've been watching. Now let's check him out. Next to some other Deathstroke figures. He is clearly based off the Arkham Origins Deathstroke look. 
Look at the costume on the Mix Max. It is almost identical to the McFarlane Arca Origins Deathstroke. And here he is with all of the different McFarlane DC Multiverse Deathstroke figures. Once again, heavily inspired from the Arkham Origins Deathstroke look. Here he is next to a DC Direct, DC Collectibles Arkham Origins Deathstroke, although the color scheme matches McFarlane figure a lot more. Here's this Deathstroke next to all the different DC Direct and DC Collectibles Deathstroke figures. And here he is next to a couple of Mezco 112 Collective Deathstroke figures. And yet again, he's based off the Arkham Origins Deathstroke look. Here he is next to a Mattel, Batman Unlimited, Arkham Origins Deathstroke. Then, with all of my Mattel Deathstroke figures. And now, next to the amazing Yamaguchi Deathstroke. Here he is next to a custom Slade Wilson in business suit, civilian attire. Just a simple head swap with a wrestling figure. And then, next to his daughter Ravager. This is on DC Direct. Here's my entire Destro collection. I believe I have all of the 6 and 7 inch versions of Deathstroke out there. And speaking of third party unauthorized figures, let's check them out next to a couple. Here he is, next to a Justice League Bruce Wayne by Noda Studios. Another phenomenal release. Then, with a Joaquin Phoenix Joker by Felix Toys. And here he is, next to a Joaquin Phoenix Joker and Arthur Fleck. These are by Patriot Studios. You can just see how much shorter these are than this Deathstroke. I much prefer the scale of Deathstroke. Here's this Mixed Max Deathstroke. Next to several different Mezco 112 Collective Batman figures. Both lines utilize cloth soft goods under the 112 scale. He is a little bit bigger than them. And I love the fact that he's 6.8 inches tall. Thank you for not being as small as some of those other third-party unauthorized figures. Now let's check him out. Next is some action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's almost 7 inches tall, I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect and work way smaller. Here he is, next to some Jack-specific wrestling figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here he is, next to some more Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here he is, with some Mafex figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, with some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. Overall, this is a fantastic figure. He looks amazing. The accessories look amazing and they are plentiful. There are some minor issues, such as the execution of some of his weapons or his hands. The knife is really loose in his hand. Some of the guns don't quite fit properly. Some of the articulation, it's good, but maybe it's not great, hindered by his armor. If I were to rate this guy, I'm going to give him a very strong 8 out of 10. Maybe I'm rating him a little too high, but this guy just looks so damn good. He's sized right. The accessories are amazing. What a great figure. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.